Hello and welcome to Haunted Montreal's Spooky Story Sessions. I'm your host, Holly Rhiannon, and today I'm going to tell you all about Chateau Ramsey. With over 500 documented ghost stories, Montreal is easily the most haunted city in Canada, if not all of North America. Haunted Montreal is dedicated to researching these paranormal tales, and our channel brings you new videos in both French and English every second Saturday. Today we examine the Chateau Ramsey in Old Montreal. Constructed in the 18th century out of fieldstone and mortar, it is likely one of the most haunted buildings in the city. But before we get into today's story, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified every time we have a new tale to share. And hey, if you're already subscribed, a big welcome back. Thank you for being here. We're happy to see you again. Now, without further ado, let's get spooky. The Chateau Ramsey Museum in Old Montreal is by far one of the most haunted buildings in the city. Just across the street from City Hall, the charming stone building welcomes thousands of visitors a year. Built in 1705 as the governor's residence, the building has witnessed a host of other uses over the years, but it was finally converted into a museum in 1895 and it still serves that purpose to this day. Inside, tourists often report various hauntings, the sounds of phantom footsteps, moaning noises coming from the fireplace, and people wearing period costumes who vanish into thin air. According to one online review of the museum, my family and I went to the Chateau Ramsey in Old Montreal. My 17-year-old daughter and I were entering the ballroom when I heard a noise that sounded like someone's heels tapping on the wooden floor, and then a light thump of a closing door. My daughter heard these same sounds. However, I saw from the corner of my eye a woman in period clothing going out of the ballroom from a door further in the room. There were a few people in the building, including guides in costumes, so I didn't think anything of it until I entered the ballroom fully and realized that there was no door where I saw the woman exit, and there was no one in the room ahead of us. Staff members have had even more bizarre experiences. Several years ago, certain employees were moving furniture in the museum, and they heard an unearthly voice. At the beginning, it sounded like the grating of wood against the ground, but nothing was moving at the spot where the noise was emanating. Slowly, the noise transformed into a human cry, loud and wailing. The noise reached a higher and higher pitch, and then suddenly stopped. On other occasions, paintings have fallen from the walls, and the furniture has moved by itself. Sometimes chairs and tables have been flung across a room as though by an angry force. There is also a sulfurous stench, like the smell of rotten eggs, which often erupts out of nowhere. It usually vanishes as quickly as it appeared. Maintenance staff have checked the pipes and ventilation system and cannot find an explanation. Journalist Mark Abley did an in-depth report into the Chateau's hauntings in a 2014 Montreal Gazette article titled Montreal is a City of Ghosts. In the article, Abley interviewed a museology technician whom he calls Monsieur L to protect his anonymity. According to Monsieur L, one morning I arrived at work. I opened the front door, I climbed the stairs, and I was alone in the building. I remember the first thing that I did was put my lunch in the fridge, and as I did that, I distinctly heard the sound of toilet paper being pulled off the metal holder in the women's bathroom by the staff kitchen. He continued, I went out into the corridor, and I noticed that the door was slightly ajar. There wasn't any light in the washroom, so I knocked on the door, and when there was no answer, I went in. Right away, I saw soap bubbles in the sink. A few minutes later, they had dissolved. Nobody else was in the building. According to Abley, Monsieur L. had kept a long list of odd occurrences at the museum since he began working there. For example, a young staff member once heard a voice calling her name from a nearby room while working alone. That room contains a portrait of Jacques Cartier, and the young lady is one of his direct descendants. In another case, staff members unlocked the heavy doors one morning to find a pile of brochures inexplicably scattered on the floor. On another occasion, two books had fallen from a shelf where everything else remained intact. There have also been cases of disembodied sneezing and ghosts allegedly sitting in chairs causing the cushions to flatten before the eyes of shocked staff. 
Management at the Chateau Ramsay do not deny that their museum is haunted. According to education director Louise Brazo, whatever it is, it shows no signs of aggression, but it can make people feel afraid. Finally, following Monsieur L's spooky introduction to the museum, he managed to capture the blurry image of a ghost in a photograph he took one day while at work. The Chateau Ramsay has since included the ghastly image in its branding, such as on video displays within the attraction. With so much paranormal activity occurring within the Chateau Ramsay, the question arises as to who exactly is haunting it. To theorize such a question, it's important to look at the building's history. The chateau was built in 1705 during the New France era as the residence of then-governor Claude de Ramsay. Known for his lavish tastes, Ramsay hired master architect and mason Pierre Couturier to design the sumptuous dwelling. Couturier built a thick stone house that was 66 feet long, three floors high, and which featured four chimney stacks. The large property originally included the residence, a fruit orchard, and a large ornamental and kitchen garden. Ramsay proudly boasted his home as unquestionably the most beautiful in Canada. When Ramsay died in 1724, his descendants sold his beloved chateau to the East Indian Trading Company, a fur trading business. This enterprise used the building as a warehouse for pelts and as a store to sell its wares. Over the years, the Chateau Ramsay would change hands many times. In 1775, American soldiers invading the city seized the building and transformed it into the U.S. Continental Army headquarters. Despite the best diplomatic efforts by Benjamin Franklin to get Montreal to join the fledgling United States of America, he failed to secure support from local residents. The following year, the Yankees were expelled by British reinforcements. The chateau was taken over by the British governor, who took it for his personal residence. In 1878, it became the first medical building for the Laval University, now the Université de Montréal. During that era, numerous patients died within the walls of the chateau, and many autopsies were performed as well. Famous Irish author Oscar Wilde visited the chateau's gardens during a lecture tour of Canada in 1882. According to lore, Wilde was so impressed with the gardens that it inspired him to write The Selfish Giant, a children's story originally published in 1888, and one of my personal favorites. The Chateau Ramsay was finally made into a museum in 1895 after being purchased by the Antiquarian and Numismatic Society and saved from demolition. Their intention was to preserve the building to establish a free archaeological, scientific, and historical museum inside. Curators collected and displayed a wide variety of items, paintings of famous people like colonists, governors, bishops, fur traders, and military heroes, old coins and documents, historical items including old weapons, indigenous artifacts, and other symbolic works, as well as curiosities of all sorts. However, over the years, the museum began to take on a haunted reputation due to all of the paranormal activity inside. There are three prominent theories as to who is haunting the Chateau Ramsay. The first theory suggests that a guard named O'Leary, who began working there in 1895, haunts it. However, the details are very thin and more research is needed. The second theory is connected to a gibbet cage that was once displayed and stored in the museum. The cage is related to one of Quebec's most famous ghost stories, Le Corriveau. In 1763, a woman named Marie-Joseph Corriveau was hanged as a witch near Quebec City after murdering two husbands. She had allegedly killed them by pouring molten lead into their ears as they slept. As a message to other potential criminals, her body was placed in a gibbet cage. It was then hoisted and hung from a tree branch at Levy Crossroads near Quebec City and left to publicly decompose over a month. During this time, as her corpse deteriorated, it was said that her ghost terrorized unfortunate passers-by. She was then buried, cage and all, in the cemetery of the St. Joseph district, Lausanne. The gibbet cage was rediscovered in 1849. Someone dug it up and stored it in the parish church at St. Joseph. However, the cage was later reported stolen. Rumors suggest that it was peddled as a curiosity and somehow ended up on display in the Chateau Ramsay. According to legend, Le Corriveau returns to haunt her cage every Halloween and may have caused some problems in the museum's early history. However, today the creepy artifact is no longer at the Chateau. 
In 1889, showman P.T. Barnum acquired the infamous gibbet cage, no doubt to be included in his greatest show on Earth. The cage eventually ended up at the Essex Institute in Boston, now the Essex Peabody Museum in Salem. In the early 2010s, members of a Levy Historical Society located the cage at the Essex Peabody Museum. Working with the museum, Corriveau's cage was soon donated to the Musée de la Civilisation in Quebec City, where it remains to this day. This raises questions about the credibility of this second theory. Finally, the third theory is related to the last warden who lived inside the museum, a certain Miss Anna O'Dowd. In the old days, the museum's curator lived in the building on the top floor. A flat or apartment was reserved for these guardians. With such a valuable collection inside the museum, it was ideal to have someone living there. Miss O'Dowd was very meticulous and detail-oriented in her presentation of the museum's displays and in the upkeep of her living space. Apparently, she didn't like any of the other staff moving things without her explicit permission. Miss O'Dowd was said to be a perfectionist. Needless to say, after stressful encounters with disobedient staff members rearranging her work without permission, Miss O'Dowd often was anxious. As such, she always enjoyed a nice piping hot bath at the end of the day in her flat on the top floor of Chateau Ramsay. According to the legend, one day in 1985, staff members arrived and were surprised that Miss O'Dowd was not there to greet them and instruct them about their work for the day. They eventually went up to her flat and knocked on the door. When there was no answer, they cautiously entered the apartment to see if Miss O'Dowd was okay. They did not see anyone in her bedroom, but unfortunately, upon entering the bathroom, they made a horrific discovery. Floating in the bathtub was Miss O'Dowd's bloated corpse. There was no conclusion as to how or why she died in the intimacy of her flat in 1985. Many believe that Miss O'Dowd suffered from a heart attack or stroke while trying to relax in her piping hot bathtub. Other ominous rumors have suggested far worse. And so, this third theory suggests that Miss O'Dowd haunts the building, forever upset that others continue to mess up her meticulous work. As a perfectionist in life, it is quite possible that her ghost is a perfectionist in death, albeit in a more deranged, paranormal way. Whatever the case, whichever theory is correct, if any, the Chateau Ramsay is one of the most haunted buildings in the city. Visit the museum at your own risk. Are you a Montreal resident or perhaps a tourist who has had a strange experience at the Chateau Ramsay? If so, we would love to know. As always, we want to hear your theories about what could be going on. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first video, we hope that you'll stick around for the next one. We post new videos in both French and English every second Saturday. If you'd like to learn more about the organization founded by the talented Donovan King, it's all listed in the description down below, along with links to purchase tickets to in-person haunted storytelling experiences. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We'll be back with a new video in a couple weeks, but until then, stay spooky.